So yes, I'm going to tell you about um, the clay dabbing that we've been building over this last last year. Um, so why why build the clay dabbing? Um, probably the first one to be built for. You can argue about this. Hundred, hundred plus years. Um, and it was the opportunity to, through building uh, a new building, uh, to explore the process and the technology of, of the Dabin builders, uh, get a little bit of an insight into um, you know, sort of what our ancestors um, went through to build these clay buildings. Um, another key thing, and a key thing throughout the whole of um, the uh, Landscape Partnership, and I think you've seen today, was to involve loads of people, get people involved um, and experiencing uh, alongside us this process of building uh, the clay dabbing, but also to share some of the skills as well, to build up a little bit of a resource of people who um, know something about these buildings and how they're put together. Um, and then finally, um, once we built the building, was to establish a permanent exhibition uh, space where we would be able to tell the story of the clay dabbings of the, of the Solway um, and also, through that exhibition, also promote the care and maintenance of these buildings and the technology um, and, and just help people to, to understand a little bit more about what they see around them. So what I'm going to do uh, is go through a very, very quick slideshow um, about the, our, our experience over this last year. Um, but this is really an, an advert for the opportunity to tomorrow uh, to come and have a look for the first time uh, at the finished building, um, or the almost finished building. Um, <laughs> we will be doing some work on it tomorrow uh, while, while yeah, you've got the opportunity to have a look. Um, so I'll come back to the end. Uh, Back to that again at the end, but we'd love to see as many of you can make it tomorrow uh, to have a look around, around this building. Um, so, we started off with, uh, with, with coming up with a design, um, and uh, a number of people involved in this, I'll mention them now. Uh, Peter has been involved uh, throughout the process um, as the authority on the clay dabbings of the, the Solway, uh, and then other people have joined us throughout the process. Alex uh, over there, who is uh, a clay builder, uh, he's from the south, but don't hold that against him, he's um, uh, now well and truly um, a, a dabbing aficionado. Um, we decided that we were going to build um, a new building, um, so we were going to build a building uh, that also promoted the clay dabbing technique um, as a viable building process for now as well. Um, and, uh, and so what we came up with was a, a relatively small building. Um, and you can see some of the elements here. Um, Alex would tell you the basis of a, a good clay dabbing is a good pair of boots and a good hat. Uh, so you can see at the bottom here uh, we've got a sandstone base, um, then you've got the clay, uh, and then it's topped off with a heather thatch roof. Um, and uh, around about four metres uh, deep by about five and a half metres long. Um, and you can see there indication of just how thick the walls are, and you'll see more of that as we go through. Uh, and there you can see um, the, uh, the thatch roof topping over the building. We built it at uh, RSPB Campfield, uh, which is just along the coast. Um, I hope most of you have been there. Uh, major centre for us in terms of the Solway wetlands, uh, and one of our two sort of visitor centres that we have developed over the course of the project. Uh, this one at RSPB Campfield and the other one at Home Cultrum Abbey. Uh, if you haven't been and visit both of those, uh, I would recommend you to do so. Um, and so we started with the sandstone base. Um, the sandstone we use came from Penrith. Um, you sort of aren't any active uh, sandstone quarries uh, remaining on the, uh, on the Solway, although um, as we've discussed before with Home Culture, uh, various places where it could have come from more locally. Um, employed uh, Andrew Loudon, who is a master waller. Um, and each of these stages of the build, as you'll see, uh, we ran workshops around. So each of the, the, the components that go up to build um, a clay dab in, there were opportunities for people to come and learn off the craftspeople that we were, were working with. Uh, yes, fieldstone would be the other, um, other technique that you see quite commonly. And there's the finished base. And here's one of the workshops that we ran uh, where people were uh, building a, a little sample, sample wall. Um, and you'll see that throughout. That, that wall became our, uh, when, when the building even became, uh, got ahead of the workshops we were wanting to do, um, then we were able to use this as a, a place to go back to and, uh, and, and carry on building on. 
And having built the base, we, we started on the first course of the, uh, of the clay. Um, and so you can see some of the uh, techniques here. It's, uh, it's all seemed very easy at this stage, didn't it, Alex? We didn't know what we were in for as we put this first, first Sorry. layer on. <laughs> so, uh, and so um, what we were putting on there, made up of this stuff, which is uh, clay, um, you know, characteristic of the Solway, we're on a, on a glacial environment here. And this is where uh, the two aspects of the landscape partnership really come together. And when we talk about a landscape, um, you know, it is about the environment and the heritage and actually where they butt up against each other. And I hope you're seeing that in terms of the themes that come out through the talks today, uh, this interrelationship between the monastic um, and, and the environment and how what we have here is an ecology has uh, fed into what we see in terms of the heritage. Um, so this clay came from uh, around about 500 metres from the actual clay site, the, the, the building site. Uh, off the reserve, we extended one of the ponds um, and uh, extracted, uh, well, we probably extracted about 400 tonnes um, of clay in, in total. Uh, straw, um, and uh, I haven't got a photograph, but also some sand. Um, and that's, that's what goes together to, to make uh, the, uh, the, the dabbing material. And uh, he can see us doing a hand mix. Um, so this was mixing together uh, the, uh, the clay um, and starting to separate it out and add water to it um, and then uh, treading on it. Um, and so historically what we would probably see is that um, the, 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 this would have been done um, during the uh, uh, summer where, um, it, when the, the beasts, sorry, during the winter where the beasts were brought in uh, and in the yard uh, the clay would have been, been uh, left in the middle of the yard. Uh, along with the straw, and so this would have been done by the, by the animals, probably. And there's a couple of animals. <laughs> uh, that's not the way we mixed all 300 odd tons that uh, we've used on, on the building. Uh, so um, we were lucky, uh, I mean the RSPB, I've got to say, have been really supportive. They're not in the business, and we make, <laughs> when we talk about Rogiska, <laughs> Peter would say they're not concerned about buildings at all. Um, but uh, actually they've been really supportive in, uh, in helping us uh, on, on this building project. Uh, so using the tractor, uh, we're able to, to do a batch um, mix, uh, and there you can see the, the clay and the straw being, being brought together. Um, and then this is a spectacular bit, we found the most effective way of actually mixing is to, to lift it up really, really high and just let it go splodge um, and uh, that helps to, to force the air out and, uh, and get a good mix. Is there a ratio uh, between the clay and the straw? Uh, yeah, well it looks about right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we could actually put a number on it, could we, well, Alex? The idea is to get as much in as you possibly can, um, because your straw is acting as your tensile strength and kind of knitting the whole thing together. And uh, so there we've got uh, the, the clay and the, uh, the straw mixed, uh, and then we're adding uh, some sharp sand, uh, some really gritty sand. Um, and. I'm going to say that helps very much with the plasticity. I mean, that was silly. It stops it getting too, too claggy. It, uh, it takes down the proportion of the clay. Um, so when actually the clay that comes out of the ground is, you know, I mean, this is what you would recognise when you were at school doing pottery. It, uh, it's really, really gooey and, and sticky. Uh, so we're actually sort of watering down the clay content uh, by adding the sand. And so the last part of the mix. And uh, then again, sort of, in terms of experimental archaeology, uh, you know, we were very fortunate that using the tractor, you can see there we've got some staging, um, uh, which has so just there. So as we were building up, uh, we were able to take a sort of floor level up in the middle of the uh, middle of the building, and then tip the uh, material directly onto that. Um, I mean, this stuff is incredibly, incredibly heavy. Um, and you know, moving it around, I mean just moving it around in terms of uh, doing the mixes on, on the platform and then moving it up onto the walls, uh, the thought of you know, sort of transporting that up by hand onto no doubt rickety staging and uh, um, uh, that was a, a, our respect for uh, the people who had built these buildings before um, was, was heightened. Um, and so so this is the, the, the characteristic of the clay dabbing. Um, so clay buildings exist uh, in various parts of, parts of the country, um, down in the southwest, in the Midlands, 
um, and up in Scotland, but this is the clay dabbing technique uh, is uh, distinct from those really in that it's, it is a continuous building technique. So, uh, whereas cob, which you see down in the southwest, uh, you might go up two or three feet uh, on a lift. Um, so that would be you know, sort of one layer um, and then that would be compacted and then left for a period to dry before the next layer is put on. Uh, obviously if you were to build like that continuously then you would end up slumping under its own weight. Now the, the technology really which we, we see in the clay dabbing technique is these four inch lifts um, and then a layer of straw on top so you can see that we've, we've, got, we've got a lift that's finished there, a layer of straw going on top, and then you can immediately build the next layer on, on top of that, and on, and on, and on. And that straw helps to stop the slumping um, and uh, uh, binds each of these layers, layers together. Um, and that is characteristic of the clay dabbings. When we talk about clay dabbings, that's, that's why what we're talking about regionally and also in terms of a technology that sets it apart from other clay building, mass walling techniques. Um, that you would see in other parts of the country. Lots of volunteers involved throughout the whole process. We've had hundreds of people involved in this, this build throughout uh, its, uh, its progress. This was a team who came from uh, uh, the um, uh, land agents from the RSPB who joined us for a, for a day. And then um, what we see is uh, as you're putting the layers on, the, uh, what you're trying to do is to get it to sort of roll over at the edges. What you don't want it to do is to bat in as you're going up, uh, so each layer gets, gets narrower. Um, so actually the, the clay bulges over, uh, and I think I've got a photograph of that somewhere. Um, and then um, when we've got a few layers up uh, and it's dried off to, uh, to leather hard, uh, then we pair off the, um, uh, the excess from the sides. Uh, you'll see how successful or not we were with that uh, when you see the building. That's Alex trying to either push it over or hold it up, I'm not quite sure of it. Um, we involved lots of children in this. We had several schools uh, come out and join us for the day. All dressed up in their PPE. You won't necessarily see that in all the photographs. <laughs> Tell them a little bit about these buildings. These are all local kids from villages um, where actually there were clay dabbins around. So uh, we were able to, to help them to understand a little bit more about where they live. Uh, it started off by getting them to use their hands. So getting, getting, getting their hands uh, and uh, what we call handballing. So uh, putting the clay on by hand, which they loved. Um, and then introducing the way we would do it using uh, using the forks. Now, I'm not saying that the kids actually helped build the building, <laughs> because our experience was that <laughs> after the kids left, we had a little bit of making good to do generally. Um, but uh, it was a great opportunity for them, um, and we loved loved having them around. It was uh, it was really good. And actually, I mean, we were building this, this was, this was around about April, uh, May last year, um, and the weather was absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, we had some secondary school kids out as well, so this is uh, um, uh, Sullivan College. Uh, I've never seen pink as a clay building. Um, <laughs> probably not the most appropriate clothing. And uh, this is one of the workshops, so as well as having people coming out and experiencing uh, like schools, uh, we also ran a series of workshops and, and this is one of the, uh, the clay building workshops. So you can see the building starting to go up here. Um, and so this is where the, the walls were at height and uh, this is the first of the wall plates going on. Um, so all the woodwork, as you'll see, is, uh, is local oak, um, comes from... Uh, just outside Cockermouth. That's the first time Alex has ever seen a spirit level. I'm the last. <laughs> <laughs> but very proud because it was level. So the wall plates are what is going to support the, the roof structure on top of the, uh, on top of the clay. Um, so as you've seen in the, uh, in the photographs, two different real techniques that we see in terms of the, uh, 
the roof construction, uh, the crooks where the weight of the um, roof is, is taken down to the ground um, through the, the members, uh, and then the more traditional or more conventional, if you like, in terms of what we see now, uh, truss construction. We went for a truss construction in the end. <coughs> So that's the, uh, the door opening and the window. This is Mick Reed who did all the woodwork. Um, uh, I mean, it's been a real joy working with some fantastic craftspeople and Alex um, throughout, the, throughout the process. <laughs> um, and Mick is an absolute genius uh, with, with oak, um, as you will see when you see the, uh, the roof. Um, as part of the process of the building the clay dabbing, we also brought Clayfest to Cumbria, uh, the Earth Building UK in Ireland, which is sort of a, a national organisation um, uh, promoting and supporting craftspeople in the, uh, in the clay building uh, world. Um, and it was the world, actually. We had people from, from uh, well, as far afield as America uh, came to join us for a week um, on site. Uh, doing a number of things, uh, but one of the, one of the workshops was, which ran throughout the week was, was working on our new build, uh, Clay, Clay Dabbin. Uh, and then onto the gables. And then uh, working on the, the roof timbers. Um, so uh, the, the, all apart from the ridge, as you'll see, uh, we actually, um, manhandled uh, the roof timbers uh, up onto the building. Again, a little bit of an experience of, of what it would be like. Um, and uh, so this was um, lots of engineers, or want to be engineers, arguing over how we would do that. Is that right, Wilson? <laughs> uh, and we got them up. So that's the tie beam. And the main truss, king post. And then the wind braces. Now Peter will say that you wouldn't ever find a wind brace on a clay dabbing. But... Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want us to fall down, ever. Um, I'll just point out actually, I mean you can see here, um, but, and you'll see this is some of the photographs, just to explain what that is. Um, we ran uh, the heather thatching workshop um, quite a bit before we got to the heather, heather thatching stage and also so that people could be really involved. Uh, we wanted to bring it sort of down to ground level. So that was sort of a false roof we built so that uh, we could uh, get people involved in, in some heather thatching. And these are the, the plates which now are going to hold the, uh, the ridge. <coughs> and that's the ridge beam going on. Um, huge piece of oak and uh, I mean this the, the driver of that uh, telehandler is quite incredible really I mean even more when you think how it would have been done um, but uh, dropped it onto the uh, the tenon on the king post there um, we just had to get it one knock with a hammer and it uh, dunk, slotted on it was a it was a great day that and uh, so that is the, uh, the timber work on, on the roof, a uh, really beautiful feature of the, uh, the building. And the rafters going on, again in oak. Um, because we're going to be leaving this building as a, as a partnership, yeah, I mean, this is you know, it's the last Heritage Forum this project will be doing, and the project finishes in June. Uh, but this, pro this building obviously is a legacy which we're leaving on the RSPB's. Uh, site um, and we do want it to last um, and we also don't want it to be a, a burden for them if you like um, so yeah we did we did invest really in um, in, in the oak roof um, but that that will last um, you know sort of without any maintenance for a, for a long long time I included these photos. We, uh, a lot of this photography was done by Fiona Smith, uh, who recorded the, uh, the, the whole build. Um, and uh, she's got some really nice arty shots here of the, uh, the roof as it's going up. Uh, just to point out, because you'll see this if you, when, you, when you visit, um, these pieces of timber aren't actually structural to the building. They, they, we're called dead men, um, and we inserted those as we were building. And uh, I mean, yesterday, actually, we were um, putting in the display boards, as you'll, you'll see a bit later on. 
Um, and so we, wherever you're going to actually fasten anything to the walls of a clay building, obviously the, the, the clay, uh, although it's incredibly strong, um, is quite friable um, and uh, doesn't provide a good anchor for, for fixing anything to the wall. So um, we build these in to help support uh, what, will now, what is now in there is in the display boards. Uh, we actually found that out yesterday. We did try to fit a display board where we hadn't put any dead, dead men in um, and failed. Uh, it's in the process of being rendered, three sides rendered. Yeah, three elevations rendered and the final ones we done on Monday. But is that when, online? Well, when you come along tomorrow, <laughs> I'll tell you what about <laughs> it. It is in, in lime and earth mix, yeah. Uh, so this is a thatch starting to go on. Uh, again, a fantastic craftsperson uh, who we were able to, uh, to work with, uh, William Tegemeyer. Um, uh, probably one of the last remaining uh, people who is around doing heather thatch uh, in the north of England, um, and uh, a gentleman. So that's what they've been used to thatch around here? Well, it's certainly material. Do we know, Peter? I mean, it's certainly material, and it's... It, we were going to actually gather some heather from the edge of the bog. Um, so, I mean, you will find heather on the edge of the bog where the bog starts to dry out. Um, and so it is certainly a local material. Um, some suggestion that there was a progression from heather through to straw as farming developed. Um, yes. Turf is, is the one uh, individual material that goes right through as under the thatch. Yeah. But then whatever was closest. So if Heather was close, then it's quite likely that they would use that rather than try and find either reed or straw. We have two minutes, please. Okay. So that's it looking a little bit shaggy. Half thatched. Uh, and the thatch finished. It's beautiful. It really is. It's uh, a work of art. And... Uh, the last bit of oak going in uh, with a window and, and door, uh, again beautifully built. Um, and we have a couple of test panels we did um, with the, uh, uh, the, the render. Uh, so this is harling, which we have actually uh, decided, this is the technique we decided to use rather than uh, smooth floating the, uh, um, the render on. And uh, so this is, this is how it is as of yesterday. Uh, display panels in. So tomorrow, if you can at all, please come and visit. Um, um, it's not the last chance you get to see it, obviously, um, but it will be for a little while. We've, we've, uh, what you haven't seen there is the, is the floor, or the lack of floor at the moment. Um, and uh, so what we decided to do um, is we're going to do a beaten earth floor, again, which would be uh, a traditional approach, um, using bull's blood, Alex tells me. Um, and uh, so that's going to be going in uh, after tomorrow so the building won't be won't be open for a little while longer while we we just finish it off we'll be doing a grand opening sometime in april um and we will let you know through the channels that presumably have let you know that this today's going on via our uh, social media on the website uh, when actually it is open uh, for the public to, to come and have a have a look around uh, but tomorrow is a sneak preview really to uh, have a look at it as it is now um finally I'd just like to thank Many people who are here today uh, and many, many others um, who have been involved uh, from people who were just passing through and thinking they were going to have a look at some birds on the RSPB reserve and decided to throw some clay around um, on their way uh, through to all the kids who were involved and uh, particularly some key volunteers, uh, Wilson uh, and Sylvia and John, um, Sylvia and John. Um, really, thank you very, very much for, for, for all that you've done to help us realise um, a new clay dabbing on the solving.